Hi guys, today we're going to talk about proportions and more specifically I can determine if two quanti uh, quantities are proportional and solve proportions. So let's begin by thinking of a jar of marbles that has red and blue marbles in it. The marbles are in, put in in a ratio of four marbles for every two uh, red marbles for every two blue marbles. So that means they're going to put in four red marbles and then put in two blue marbles and then put in another four red marbles and put in another two blue marbles. So every time four reds go in, two blues also go in. This ratio of four red to two blue can be simplified to two red to one blue and put into a table. Now tables are one great way and we're going to talk about three ways um, that we can solve ratio problems. Tables are one really great way. So I start with my ratio, my simplified ratio of 2 to 1. And we also know that 2 to 1 gives us 4 to 2. And we can think of these like equivalent fractions, really. Um, if I had the improper fraction of 2 to 1, that would equal 4 to 2 by multiplying 2 times 2 and 1 times 2. So to move on to get the next, to continue our table, um, I can multiply 2 times 3 to get 6, and 1 times 3 to get si um, 3. To continue, I might do, after 2 times 3, I would do 2 times 4 to get 8, and then 1 times 4 to get 4 and 2 times 5 to get 10, and 1 times 5 to get 5, and I can continue this table forever and ever and ever. But now let's just pick any two equivalent ratios, because that's what I've created in this table. And equivalent ratios are the exact same thing as equivalent fractions. So I pick any two, it doesn't matter which ones, and I'm going to pick 4 to 2 and 10 to 5, and I'm going to write them so that they are equal. What I have just written now is a proportion, which we'll get to in a second. But I want to tell, or how can I tell, if these two ratios are equivalent? Well, there's several ways. I could simplify both, and if I did that, I would get 2 to 1 on both sides of the equal sign. Or, and this is going to be important when it comes to solving certain proportions, I can use cross products. Now, when you learned about fractions, you learned that cross products of equivalent fractions need to be equal. The same thing applies for equivalent ratios, because they're really not treated very different from equivalent fractions. So, 4 times 5 equals 2 times 10, both sides equal 20, so I have just proven that these two ratios are, in fact, equivalent. So, here are some examples of proportions, and let's talk about solving proportions. A proportion is two ratios that are equal. So let's look at ratio 1 and ratio 2. We want to know, are these two ratios equal? Well, there are several ways we can do it. We can say, okay, well, 1 to 6 is a fraction, and 2 to 12 can be written as a fraction, and are these two equal? So basically, they're they should be multiplicative in nature. So 6 times 2 equals 12, and 1 times 2 equals 2. Therefore, I can say that this is an example of a proportion because these two ratios are equivalent. Let's look at these two ratios. Are they equivalent? Can they simplify to the same um, fraction? Or can I easily tell what I multiply the numerator and denominator by to get the second ratio? Can I multiply it by the same number to get the second ratio? And in this case, once again, I can, so this is an example of a proportion. Let's look at this one. How do I get from 2 to 4? Well, that's simple, I multiply by 2. But when I come down here and multiply 5 times 2, that gives me 10 and not 12, therefore, this is not an example of a proportion. Also, I can't simplify 4 to 12 to get 2 fifths. I would get uh, 2 to 6. I could have also tested it by doing cross products. I could have taken 2 to 5 and 4 to 12 and did, um, found the cross products. I would have found that 5 times 4 is 20. It needs to equal 2 times 12, 
but that's 24 and they're not equal. So this is not an example of a proportion. So as you can see, there are several ways that I can determine whether or not two ratios are in proportion. Here's another example. 3, to get from 3 to 9, I multiply by 3. But when I multiply 2 by 3, I don't get 8. I get 6. Therefore, this is not an example of a proportion. And remember, we've talked about this before, but when you have an equal sign with the line going through it, that means it's not equal. So, 3 cars to 2 trucks is not equal to 9 cars to 8 trucks. So, using the idea of cross products, I can solve a proportion. But sometimes, in this, in this case, I might not need to go through and do the cross products. And if you don't need to, then you don't really, then don't waste your time doing it. You can look at this one and say, well, to get from one day to three days, what do I need to do? I multiply by three. So what's 24 by times three? 72. So I've just solved the proportion by basically creating equivalent fractions. With this one, I can look and see that I can multiply 3 times 12 to get 36. So I look at the numerator and multiply 1 times 12 to get 12 pods to 36 p's. It's just like creating equivalent fractions. And we're solving proportions in the process. But let's look at a problem. Now, one key thing we need to remember when we are writing proportions and equivalent ratios, that whatever variable I choose to put in the numerator of my first ratio must also go in the numerator of my second ratio. Same thing with the denominator. Whichever variable I put in the denominator must also go in the denominator of the second ratio. So if I'm looking at this problem, a recipe calls for three cups of flour to make 10 cookies. Jill wants to make 26 cookies. How much flour does she need? Well, I'm going to set up a proportion. For the first recipe, or the recipes, um, the recipe for these cookies, I know that every three cups will make 10 cookies. So that will be my first ratio. Three cups of flour will give me 10 cookies. So let's make actually that F, and we'll say 3F to 10C. And I know that Jill needs to make 26 cookies. So notice, the recipe will make 10 cookies. I need 26 cookies. Cookies are the same variable, so they're both going in the denominator. Three cups of flour to, I don't know how many cups of flour. Um, so this is the proportion I'm going to set up in order to solve. And here, let me clean that up for you. So, when I look at this proportion, I can't multiply 10 by a number that I know of in my head that I can quickly and easily do and then multiply 3 by. I can't find a number that would make this easy to do in my head. So I'm going to choose, in this case, to solve this proportion using cross products. So I cross multiply and I do uh, 3 times 26. And I know that since this is a proportion, it's got to equal 10 times x, or 10x. Then I multiply 3 times 26 to get 78 equals 10x. And here, I just have a one-step equation. And I have multiplication in this equation, so I know I need to divide both sides by 10 to get 7 and 8 tenths equals x. Now, remember we talked about at the beginning of this unit that it is very important that you are labeling your answers. So, we would write Jill needs 2 and 8 tenths cups of flour because we want to make sure that we um, are being very clear what this answer represents. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and answer 1 through 4 in the work section of your WSQ. When you are finished, hit play again because you have one more problem to complete. Now, for this problem, you are going to choose which proportion you would use to solve 
the word problem given. Once you've chosen a proportion, go ahead and solve it. We are now done with this lesson. You can go back and watch any portion of this video as many times as you need to, or watch the whole thing. But don't forget to WSQ in your notes.